Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now, sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. We are ready. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Today I have my guest Simon. Simon, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And I love this freaking movie cover. I think it's awesome. <laughs> Two, I love slashers. And three, I love holiday horror movies. So it's just like all in one awesome. The trailer, which we will show you guys eventually, is awesome. So you guys have to see that. But uh, thanks for coming on, though. I greatly appreciate you coming on. No, absolutely. It's great to uh, talk to you. And I love this. Uh, I wish I knew. I wish I was as clever as you to do that thing in the background. I can't do it. Whenever I have to put something in the background, it actually has to be there. This isn't a green screen or anything. It has to actually physically be there. Otherwise, it doesn't work for me. Oh, I'm not that smart. Yeah, I, it's funny you mentioned that because like with this whole green screen thing, this is actually a lot neater than how I had it. A good friend of mine, excuse me, shout out to my boy Aaron. Over this weekend, now he lives in North Carolina, I live in upstate New York, and I was Zoom chatting with him as I was redoing my green screen setup, because he does, like, photography and videography and all that stuff, and he knows about all this stuff. Yeah. I was just like, uh, I need help, because I have, technically I have four different screens, right? I have, well, I only have two set up now, but there's two right here, the other two are put away now, and it was three different greens. <laughs> These two are the same, and the other two are two different greens from this, so when I'm using it with Zoom, yes, it would work. But because, but it wouldn't, it, yeah. because they're a little, they're a few shades different, it would be like me moving and stuff, you could tell. Like, I mean, it's not as bad with the shadows, but it was way worse. So he helped me set that up. And it, looks, it looks very clean. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> he told me that, and then he was telling me, like, with the, uh, what is it? The, um, instead of putting, like, 60 frames per second, just leave it at whatever. Like, my camera records at 30 frames per second. I did not know that. I thought it did 60. So my camera, my webcam records at 30, and he said to put it at like 25 or 23.97. I have it at like 25 as far as far as what I'm exporting and like uploading and all that, not recording. Recording, I do whatever the camera's default is, which is 30. But, you know, live and learn. <laughs> it's cool to have people that, you know, it's cool, it's cool to have friends and a team around you that knows how to do certain things that you don't know how to do. But it's also good to be keep sort of uh, tweaking and ever improving the format. Oh, yes, yes. Like, from when I first started using the green screen till now is, like, night and day. And I'm sure from right now till, say, five, six months from now, or maybe even two, maybe two months from now, it'll probably be the same thing. It'll be, like, night and day again, which I think is an amazing thing. You just find little tweaks with everything. And it's good, though. It's good, though. You should never be – I don't want to say you should never be satisfied – but you, you should never want to not improve on things. I'm not saying you should never be satisfied, but if you, could, if you feel like there's a way you can improve, and that goes with anything in life, why not yeah. try to? You gotta, that's it. You gotta, uh, the minute you uh, stop learning, isn't it, you should just give up and go home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm already, I mean, I'm recording from home, so technically I'm home, but... Well, yes, but you haven't given up, Aaron. It's different, you know, sort of... Uh, you're still still fighting. You haven't given up. Don't say you've given up yet. There's... Oh, no, no, ne- never, never, never. There's no reason to. I, I enjoy this stuff so much. I love learning about it. Like, my next thing is learning editing more, just to do certain little things with my videos and certain little things with my episodes to make them more entertaining visual, yeah. visually. But that'll come. That'll come again. Just gotta learn, 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 learn. YouTube helps. That's it. Yeah, you. Hey, listen. Everything's on YouTube. You want to know how to do something? Just YouTube it. It's it's great. I I, I kind of like. I hate a lot of technology, and I like a lot of the little perks, though. You know, like sort of. Uh, so it, I do. I do quite like that stuff. <laughs> now, what got you? Or not what got you? Yeah, who or what got you into horror movies? And then, what was the first movie, if any, that scared you as a child? Oh God! Um, yeah, I was terrified. I wasn't very. I don't think as a child I liked horror movies a lot. I mean, to me, when I was a kid, you know, um, things like Jurassic Park were very scary. You know, sort of. Uh, it, you know, sort of, and they're not horror movies. Um, so I don't think I was a very big horror. It wasn't like I was one of those kids that I see today who were like eight years old and able to watch, you know, it or something. You know, particularly, I was like, this would have terrified me. You know, sort of when I was young. Uh, yeah, so I don't think I sort of gradually got into it. Honestly, I just came into movie making just um, as an actor and stuff like that, sort of. Um, and then I found my uh, I found my group. But when I was younger, a man, I was playing all the, the good guys, uh, like the heroes. Mm-hmm. And I got sort of, uh, you, you know, I was sort of, I was okay. It was a bit slow and stuff like that. And then I played a bad guy in something, um, in a movie. And then my, my agent at the time was like, that's it, Simon, that's your thing. You know, so he's like, grow the beard, uh, you're a bad guy. And he goes, that's your thing. He's like, because he was like, it wasn't, the other things wasn't sort of sitting right. He goes, this is your groove. So it's not very long when you're a bad guy before someone puts you in a horror movie as a bad guy. Um, so uh, I've, I've ended up not really loving the genre of horror like, like everybody else says. One of my, my youngest uh, memories is, uh, right, get this, okay. One of my youngest memories of a movie that really scared me was Gremlins, um, which obviously isn't very scary, or it always barely a horror movie. Mm-hmm. And years later, I would end up doing a movie with um, Zach uh, Galligan, who's the who's the guy who has the Gremlins, the main guy. <laughs> so I was telling him, I was like, I was like, oh man, that movie terrified me when I was young. Like I was just, I was just thinking I was just a bit too young to see it. It was, uh, yeah, it was horrific. I, I mean, I can see why that movie would be in the horror category, like. It might be real subtle horror, but I get it. And then as a kid, I feel as a child, you have that wild imagination. Your mind just wanders and goes. And in your mind, yeah. you know, like in your mind as a kid, you're smart enough to know it's not real. But at the same time, you still have that childhood. You still have that child imagination where it's like, maybe it is real. And then. Aaron, I don't know if I was that smart. I <laughs> honestly, straight up, I think I might have been stupid enough to believe that it was real. But again, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a kid thing, though. It's like an innocent kid thing if, if you thought that or not. And I think that's one thing I do miss about being a kid watching these horror movies is not necessarily thinking that it's real, but just having that fear, like, throughout the whole movie at the edge of your seat, heart racing, but not out of excitement, out of, like, maybe a little excitement, too, but it's, like, more of a fear thing. You're scared. You sleep with the lights on and all that stuff. I miss that part, minus sleeping with the lights on. But, like, now... Here and there, I will jump at a movie. Mostly if I'm watching with my wife and she jumps and screams, that'll make me jump. But here and there, I do jump. And like I said, I, I just miss that aspect, that fear aspect of movies. I still love these movies. I still love the horror genre. Slasher is my favorite, hands down. But I still yeah. love the horror genre all across the board because it's, it's so entertaining. I look at it, it's like, it's like a beautiful art. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, horror movies. You know, there's two types of movies that really can make or break the genre. It's, it's funny because they're, they're comedies and horrors, you know, sort of. If a comedy isn't very funny, it, it dies. But if it's very funny, it doesn't matter who's in it, where it's at. You know, like a funny movie is just, it can skyrocket. It can be at the Oscars type of stuff, you know, sort of. And same with the horror. It, its potential is like unlimited if it's scary, if it's you know, sort of if people do it right. Now, slasher movies, 
I always think the slasher movies aren't the scariest of horror movies, but then they're sort of not supposed to be. They're kind of um, a bit more, uh, you know, they're a bit more what the audience wants. They want sort of inventive kills and, uh, you know, sort of, uh, it's, like, it's like watching the Saw movies. They're sort of gory. And what you wanted when there's, you know, Saw movie was a horror movie, but what you wanted was the gory sort of horrible sort of psychological horror. Uh, you know, like sort of things. You didn't want. You don't necessarily jump at something. It's scary. Those weren't those type of films. But uh, yeah, it's, horror's got so much uh, length and breadth to it. It's uh, it's incredible what's out there right now. Uh, I, I love it. I agree. I, I agree with you one million percent. I think with with horror though, versus comedy, like you're saying, if a comedy movie's not that funny, you're not really going to do anything. You're not going to be that excited about it. Yeah. A horror movie. If it's not that scary, you'll still give it a chance just because. Like it's a horror movie can not be scary or not scary because most don't none of them scare me, but you can still be very very entertained by it. Versus, I feel like a comedy movie if it's not fun you're just like I'm never gonna watch this movie again. This movie sucked. <laughs> Throw it in the garbage. But horror you can watch it, and I mean something could just stand out. It could be a cool kill, cool story, just something. It could be funny. Like there could be something you found funny. You're like I want to watch this movie just because this part was funny as hell, or this cool yeah. or this kill was cool, or whatever the case may be. And that's, I think that's why horror, to, in my, my opinion, I feel like horror is the best genre because it can literally go in any direction and there's a fan for it. I'm sure there's romantic horror movies. I know there's horror comedies. Then you got the slasher, the paranormal, the action-packed ones. There's a little something for everybody in a horror movie. You just have to pick that genre. And then there's even stuff for kids. Like, you could say, Are You Afraid of the Dark from back in the day? Goosebumps. Um, yeah. Hocus, yeah, there is a... What is it? Hocus yeah. Is that movie that comes out every October that people like to watch, like those little cheesy Disney Disney little horror things. Casper the Friendly yeah. is actually a good one, I feel. You can, it's more comedy, it's more Disney, yes, but you can still put it in a horror category to an extent for children because of the ghost aspect. Scooby Doo. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And I just love that. It's it's true. There's a there's a lot out there, and it's a it's a lot of good stuff. I hadn't thought about it as children's horror, but yeah, you're right. I was trying to think whilst you were talking there about a romantic horror. Can you think of one? I feel like I watched something recently, but I can't really think of it. Like <laughs> I can't think Damn, of this, this romance, romance. But I feel there could be maybe maybe not like romance throughout the whole movie. I feel like there could be something kind of subtle. I mean, I mean, if you call the Adams family romantic, what? The husband and wife, and uh, what's the other one? Oh, what about My Bloody Valentine? That was like a, because it's set around Valentine's Day. So there's a theme of love with it always. Works for me. Let's count it. <laughs> Let's count it. Let's if count not, it. Aaron, we may well have just have thought of a new subgenre for horror, you and me over here. So. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect for those guys that hate romantic movies. And for the, you know, they're in a relationship, say, they hate romantic movies, their girl hates horror. You put them together, it's like, hey, babe, let's go watch uh, <laughs> whatever you want to put, put, put them together, Aaron, and you've got a movie that neither of them like. And they go, this was a horrible date night. <laughs> or, or they both love it because it's a beautiful love story. And then at the end, maybe, maybe it's a couple, a romantic couple, it's a slasher, and they kill together. You're doing something with your wife or your girlfriend. There you go. <laughs> That's romance right there. We, we've just invented a whole new subgenre here. This is great. Beautiful. Now, what In are a year's you... time, this will be on the cinema, and we're like, remember, Aaron, when we thought of this? Yep. And someone else is making all the money off of it. Someone, someone, else, someone else is watching right now, taking notes, going, oh, yeah, I'm going to go do that. Thanks, guys. They, they won't thank us. Don't worry. <laughs> well, you're welcome anyway. We, want, we have 100% of the credit. Now, what yeah. are those um, pictures behind you of, or posters behind you? These are uh, posters I put up to impress people um, of all my past projects. Actually, there's quite a few of them up here. So I've got, uh, I've got quite a few if I till up there. Uh, so I've done a fair few things, which isn't that I'm, doesn't mean that I'm good at it. It just means that I'm old. <laughs> Consistent. You say consistent. Consistently old, yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I've done it. So I, there's uh, various horror bits up there and stuff like that. I've been very lucky. I've managed to work with uh, uh, some amazing horror icons. Um, I, I've done a movie with Robert England. It was Freddy Krueger. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've done some uh, crazy, crazy, crazy movies. Um, actually, I was just watching that movie the other day. <laughs> I was just, somebody just sent me this movie, right? 
this is not an advert for the movie, but um, I did a movie and they said, do you want to be in it? Because it had Robert England in it. And I was like, pretty good. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, what is it? And they go, you're like a Val Hale scene character and you're saving these women and the, there's werewolves in it. And I was like, this sounds crazy. I was like, what is this? And they were like, it's, it's called Strippers versus Werewolves. Um, and I was like, I'm sold. So, yeah. And I was like, you, you had me at Strippers. I'll see you Monday. <laughs> and I, I've just, sort of, we were just, uh, I was just pulling a clip from that. So I was uh, the show people. Are any of your movies on like a streaming service like Amazon Prime or Tubi or anything? Yeah, I'm sure that uh, there are. There are I, I never know where they are. Sorry, right things. You're talking to me in Canada, uh, but uh, where? Where in? You're in America. But whereabouts are you? I'm in New York, New York State. New York. Yeah. New, oh, sorry, you did say that. Yeah. Sorry, New York. Yeah. So I'm never sure because Amazon and Netflix change from region to region, which disturbs me all the time if I'm traveling. Um, I believe I've got a horror movie on um, Netflix right now called Gehenna which was, is like a Japanese horror um, by Hiroshi Katagori, is the director. And uh, it was a movie we did. Um, we filmed in uh, Los Angeles and Saipan, which is like this island in the middle of nowhere. Um, and yeah, it's like a, a time-traveling uh, bunker, you know, sort of five people trapped uh, on a on a beautiful island, uh, but in, in an old World War Two bunker, and it's a fantastic story. And I think it's on Netflix right now, and it's got the great Doug Jones in it, who was um, who's been in everything, but he was in The Shape of Water as the fish, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I said to him when I thought I was like, "You play a fish, Doug." <laughs> That's interesting. I definitely I want to. I would like to see a lot of your work if I can find it. Stream. I yes. Know. It's out there somewhere, Aaron. If you just Google my name, it all comes up with stuff wherever you are. It, it, there's stuff on Amazon Prime. Okay, so can I plug something, Aaron? Of course. On Amazon Prime right now, my TV show is on um, season one is on called Age of the Living Dead, which is a, a vampire. T so it's a set 10 years in the future in America where America's been quarantined because of a vampire pandemic or epidemic not sure what the difference is um we should find out what the difference between pandemic and epidemic is by the end of the show um but it's the they it's an outbreak of vampires and they isolate and quarantine america and then 10 years later they catch up with uh they catch up with this i'm gonna sh yeah we should sh we should show a trailer of that god why don't i have a trailer of this hold on Aaron, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share a screen and show you a trailer. How about that? I've just flipped that totally on its head. Or have you got a trailer? I, to, uh, I think I have to allow it. Or do or is it going to do it? I'm not sure. All right, I I'll have to let you do it because <laughs> I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but I but I nearly I nearly knew how to do it because I've never done that before. Anyway. Age of the Living Dead is on Amazon Prime right now. And it's season one, and we've just wrapped on season two. So I'm very excited about it, because uh, season two is in the offing very soon. All right, I just, I just clicked the thing to allow you to be able to share, share screen. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see if I've... All right, let's see. This is cool, though. And I get to share this... your other one. <laughs> yeah, you can say which I totally forgot about. Which loads of people who are watching this will hate that the fact that I forgot about that. It's my like it's a TV show. It's not even a movie. It's 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 huge. Like <laughs> it's not the fact that I would have uh, the fact that that would have missed I would have missed that would have been somebody I would have got sacked. You didn't miss it though. I didn't. I didn't miss it. I caught it in time. So okay. I've really, 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 I'm a savior. Sorry. All right. I know what you were doing? This is all planned. This is all part of the show. That's right. See, Aaron's, Aaron's got me. He, he knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Hold on. Sorry. Let me, let me see if I get the right one here. Before I'm going to get the right trailer before I before, you play. Before I click, because that would be hor horrendous if I got it wrong. Oh, my God. Where is it? Right. Oh, no, that's not the right one. 
this, this, yeah, right. Okay. Right. Hopefully this is going to work. So I'm going to share my screen. Is that what I'm yeah, share. It's, it'll say share screen. Then you pick which screen you want to share. If you have multiple screens, desktop. All right. Allow. Oh, you allow the sound. Allow Zoom. All right. God. Oh. Okay. Right. Have I done it? Can you see me? I can see your screen. Ah, oh, well, that's all right. Isn't that what we want? Yep. Can you see the trailer? Yes, sir. Here we go. This looks interesting. Oh, there's you. There we go. All right, am I back? Yep, yep, you just hit stop share and you'll be back. You'll be right back. There we go. You see me again? Sir. That looks interesting. I'm going to have to uh, check that out. My wife will be, she loves vampire stuff, so I'll have to check that out with her. Oh, well, there, there you go. That's vampire stuff, Age of the Living Dead on Amazon Prime now. And season, we just wrapped on season two, so I'm very excited to, uh, to be getting in because we're going into season three very shortly, so... Awesome. That's awesome. Now, do you you act and direct, correct? Uh, I have directed. I don't direct any of the things that you're talking about, but uh, any of the horror stuff. Um, but I have directed um, yeah, a few pieces. Like I've only I've, I've directed about five or six things. Oh, I've been in about sixty things. Oh, I'm going to ask you what your preference was out of the two. But it sounds like acting. Our acting is always a lot more fun, um, you know, so that you get to just do your thing and go, you know, and then you, you go home and somebody six months later sends you a trailer for it and you're like, oh, that looks great. <laughs> so, so, whereas the director, he stays there and he tries and fixes all the problems that have come up on set that didn't get the shots they wanted or they ran out of time or somebody was shit at acting and they have to cut around it or something. And you don't, as the actor, you just, you don't see that. You just go to the, they send you the trailer and it's great. You're like, brilliant. I love it. Uh, but as a director, you, you know, you have to claw for every frame, every second of that movie. So, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool though. That's cool though. I ask that because I get both, I get both sides when I get, you know, someone that's done both or does both. I get both yeah. sides of it. Some people like to be, you know, the director call the shop and all that good stuff. And some people like to just, some people like to act. Some people just like both the same. They're like, Hey, whatever one, as long as it gets me on the set, I'm good. Which. I'll yeah. I mean, I, I like to, uh, I definitely like to be involved in the story and the sort of, uh, produ I, like, I do, I do producing on uh, quite a lot of stuff. Um, and I like to have my, I don't know. I like to have my thoughts heard on something, but usually I just want to make sure I'm on the same page with the director or the producers you know, sort of that we're all trying to create the same movie, you know, sort of. Um, and if you have a good idea, 
you know, you kind of want it to be hers and you, you want it to be taken forward, you know. So, you, I mean, you've got to trust the, you have to trust the team, you know, sort of, but uh, you want the, you do want it to be a team effort a lot. That's, yeah, no, that, that's true. That makes plenty of sense with that. You do want to trust your team with whoever you're surrounded with and you want to be on the same page with all that stuff. Make sure it all makes sense. Make sure you all have this, a same, the same vision or a similar vision and then you kind of just meet in the middle. Yeah, and that's that's the goal, definitely for because that's I think that's uh, no no one person can do it all, you know, not really. Uh, they need help, you know, sort of. And uh, if you know, sometimes it's 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 a lot easier if you have a lot of help and a lot of help with people on the same page, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you have a least favorite movie that you've done that you've worked on, either directed or acted in? Uh, a least favorite movie. Uh, not really, not overall. I've got parts of things I didn't like. So like you're doing a movie and you work with somebody and you're like, uh, you know, like there's a, it's a horrible process or you don't get on with the person or something like that. So that becomes the, and then there's, I, I often feel like sometimes I've done a movie with people and they let one element lets it down. Like, everything's really good, but the camera guy wasn't great, you know? So subsequently the movie doesn't look good. Uh, so I've got bits of things that I don't enjoy about a lot of stuff, but you know, there's nothing, there's no, I would never say that there's, I hated anything because even a bad movie, you make, you learn lots of things on it. You know, you learn by making mistakes what you wouldn't do again. So that everything has its value. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't, um, there's nothing I hate, hate. There's nothing I go, there's nothing somebody could say, Simon, remember that movie? And I'd be like, oh, don't talk to me about that movie. <laughs> you know, I, I usually usually have some sort of cool story from it or something that I've taken from it. Uh, you know, nothing has been without value. That's good, though. All right, now, the opposite end of that, what about a favorite? Or is it the same thing, like favorite moments more than a favorite movie? Yeah, well, no, I suppose yes and no. Sort of sometimes things come together sort of magically and you don't really understand why. And worse than it's like a recipe for a cake. You can follow it exactly the next time and it won't turn out the same way. So, you know, for some reason it doesn't taste the same. And we've had a couple of career uh, highlights of things like that, things that have just worked. Uh, and I don't know why they worked, um, but they did. Age of the Living Dead, that thing that I just showed you, was something where all the actors, all the story, all the directors, the producers, you know, the, you know, even the salespeople involved, um, who I usually hate most of the time, um, you know, come, have all, all come together quite in a good way, you know, sort of. Um, and so that, that, was, uh, that show is definitely a favorite of mine, um, uh, this one. And the, the, Christmas, the Christmas movie, The Night Spore Christmas, is a very guilty pleasure of mine because... You know, sometimes when you're doing uh, stuff, you have to sort of research and you have to kind of get together uh, a kind of character and a backstory and, a, you know, you have to flesh it all out in your mind um, so that you're, you're going to do a good job. <laughs> With this one where I'm uh, playing uh, like a bad Santa Claus behind you, it's really just kill as many people as possible and have fun doing it. And, it, you know, like somebody was like, you know, what research did you do for it? And I was like, for playing Father Christmas, I was like, nothing. Like, no, I, I did no, no. Re what do you mean, research? I was like, it's, it's a bad, it's, it's a fictional character anyway. And I was like, but it's a, a fictionalized, you know, version of a fictional character. There are no rules. You, I can do anything I want. You know, don't worry about it. <laughs> that, that's awesome. That is very awesome. I mean, I, I love this freaking cover, by the way. I think it's just cool as hell. And yeah, all right. I'm going to give this one. That's the salespeople. They've finally done something good. Finally, the salespeople have done something good. Yeah. They did a great job with this. And I mean, if you want, we could jump in. I can show the trailer real quick. Let's do it. Because let's do it. Make sure I do this right. Share screen. This screen. Computer sound, yes. And here we go. Oh, I doing here? Courtney, come home. What? Just for Christmas. Dad, he's still out there. They were violent, they were crude, and they were dangerous. There's my Mrs. Claus. Have you been a good girl? Mm -hmm. I've been a little bit naughty. Me too.
bided his time. Shit! He made his plan. He killed 30 people. He burnt down that whole asylum. Don't let her get inside your head. What? What if it's an actual list? Say it! Say it! Say it! What's my name? Santa, is that you? Excuse me. Uh, good stuff. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's out on December 6th, by the way. I, I don't know if I told you that already. I was supposed to say those things. December 6th. <laughs> I'm happy to know that, man. I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait. That looks freaking amazing. I was just like, holy shit. The blood, the guts, everything. Like dragging somebody by their neck with the Christmas lights. I think my, my favorite moment in that trailer, I don't know if you can see what's going on there, is uh, I'm, I'm taking a, uh, a piss in the bathroom next to some other guy. And uh, he makes, in the movie, he makes a, a remark about me and how I look. So I respond by getting these sort of garden shears and sort of, you know, leaning over his thing and yep. cutting the stick off. It's just, uh, I've never done that before. It's, you know, I've done a lot of movies. And, you know, every day, they, I'm, every movie, they think of something and they go, have you ever done this before? And I was like, I've never, I've never done this before, no. And I was like, this is definitely a first. And they're like, oh, great. And I was like, it is great. It's not, I don't think it's what my mum thought I'd be doing when I was younger. Uh, but it is great, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's mother's like, yeah, my son's going to grow up, be an actor and cut dicks off. <laughs> my mum comes to see, my mum hates these movies, right? And she comes to see them, uh, like if we have a premiere or something like, or, or this um, or that, we have a, a premiere coming up for this, the Christmas movie. And the, the, whenever I did one before, because uh, uh, this, this is actually a, a, a sort of sequel to another movie uh, called Once Upon a Time at Christmas. So I played, I played the Bad Santa Claus before uh, for Lionsgate. So uh, when my mum saw that one movie, she kind of did the thing of Simon. Why can't you just be like? Why can't you just be nice to that girl? Why do you have to? Why do you have to kill her? You know, sort of or torture her or something. And I was like, well, mum, you know, like the lines are they they write the lines down for you and they you know they they just give you the costume and they they tell you what to say. You know, that's you don't think I'm I'm not there really doing. It. I'm also not really Santa Claus. You know that, don't you? But it doesn't stop my mum hating it. Yep. I can could, I could just imagine her on set, just like, you know what, Simon? I don't think you should do you, you should probably put that knife down unless you're going to cut a cake, Simon, you know? I, yeah. She's talking? like, why don't you just do what I taught you to do as a nice man? You just, why don't you talk your problems out with these people? You don't need to use violence. And I'm like, yeah, I know, Mom, but then there'd be no movie because nothing would happen. You know, she, well, you know, that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I... That movie, though, this movie right here looks awesome. Just from that trailer, the cover and the trailer, I can't wait to freaking see it. And December 6th? December 6th is coming out, yeah, for sure. Um, or for our, uh, we've got, I think we're in some festivals. We're at uh, the Blood in the Snow in Canada and um, Fright Fest. Do you know what? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to have said that. I don't know if that information's out there yet. <laughs> if that information's out there, I've confirmed it. If it's not, Please, I'm sorry that I, I don't... People should really tell me exactly what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not. You can't give me a list of things to mention and things of not to mention. I just need one list of things I'm not allowed to say. Just give me the not allowed to say list. See, that, that, now that right there makes plenty of sense because if I had two lists like that, I'm going to get confused. Like, look, I've yeah. tumbled up. Just tell me what I can't... Just, and that, I would want it the opposite. Though. Like, let me know what I can say. Like, let me know what I can say about when it's coming out, this, that, and the third. 
And then the rest, don't even tell me about it. I don't even need to know about it if I can't say it. Oh, so here's the problem, Aaron. You see, if you already know the information. So I got told the information about the festivals and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, but then I, look, right beforehand, they go, right, do say this, don't say this, do say that, don't say that. And you're like, I just need one list of things I can't say. Honestly, just give me the list of can't says. And if it's not on the list, I'll, I won't feel bad about saying something. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, you do this again. How many times do you have to tell? Like, listen, how many times? Give me the list of stuff I can't say, and I won't say it. Just so- give, give me the script. It's very easy, guys. Uh, give me the script, and I will say it for you. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're an actor. It's like, look, I act. I say the script right in the movie, right? So just say yeah. it. Pretend I'm in a movie. Uh, you say that. Uh, so, uh, so, right, in this movie, I'll tell you just one this little tidbit. I'm wearing these, like, metal teeth. Um, they're like metallic, uh, like a, I don't know, like a grill, right? And I had to have them specially made for my teeth and stuff like that, which was a lot of fun. Um, and then the guy was like, you want to practice, Simon, you know, sort of with them in. It's like having, um, I don't know if you had a retainer when you were young or anything like that, straighten your teeth, you know, and they're like, because if you don't, you're sort of, um, it, it's hard to speak with them in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll practice. And obviously I didn't practice, you know, so that, you know, because I uh, because I am the person I am. I didn't practice. I was lazy. And then when I got to set, I put the teeth in and I start doing the lines. And I'm trying to sound threatening to people, but I've got this like all of a sudden this speech impediment. So I'm like saying everything like "Merry Christmas, everyone." And if they're like, "Are you lisping?" And, you know, and I was like, "Yeah." If because they got the uh, I've got these teeth in the mouth, and then they're like, "Okay, okay you've got to try and." You've got to try and st- you just got to work on it. Cause we can't, you know, the minute you have a lisp in your mouth, everyone wants to laugh when you're saying, you know, I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill every one of you guys, you know, stop laughing at me. Fucker and fucker dash, you know, sort of, so it's one of those, it's, and they got, to- <laughs> but I didn't practice. So a lot of the movie I had to ADR later on <laughs> into going to a, a booth just to fix it. Cause I didn't practice. Yep. You are going to make it more work for yourself. <laughs> I- yeah, I did. I'm, I'm not representing myself very well. Aaron, this isn't going very well between me and you here because I keep telling you all the reasons people shouldn't hire me as an actor. I've just listed out. I say too much information. I don't do any rep practicing with the teeth. No, this is why they should hire you because you're not afraid to make mistakes. You're not afraid to bet on yourself. And you're man enough to admit when you mess up. And you will fix those mistakes. I'm telling everybody right now, Aaron is my new manager. With with that that was phenomenal. He's the man. Everybody wants Aaron as their manager. Trust me, the world will be a better place. I agree. I agree. Now he's got. You got to figure out ways to flip it. Like, listen, this is. I'll just try something. Okay, guys. He's gonna fix it. Don't worry about it. And it's gonna end up being awesome because of it. Exactly. Exactly. And then going back to the list thing, I think the only person that. You wouldn't laugh in their face with the lisp is Mike Tyson because he is a very threatening guy with or without the lisp. That's right, yeah. I mean, you'd have to, you'd be a very brave man to laugh at Mike Tyson, I think. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't if be. That, isn't Mike Tyson making a comeback yeah. match or something soon? I believe um, in November he's fighting Rose. I saw a video of him training and he looks like he's going to kill whoever he's fighting. I don't even know who he's fighting. But I just saw a video of him like training. I was like, whoever he's fighting is just, is just a walking dead man right now. Yeah, he's, I he's, don't know he's, why anybody would get into a ring with Mike Tyson. It's just suicide. It's a cry for help. It is. Roy Jones Jr. is who he's supposed to be fighting. They're supposed to be, it was actually supposed to be this weekend, but they pushed it back. I want to say it's the weekend of Thanksgiving, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that's just nuts. I seen that same training video and I was scared. <laughs> I was like, oh man. Yeah, I was scared. I was scared watching it. I was like, Jesus Christ. The man is fifty four years old, moving I know, good for you know what? Good for him. Fifty four years old and he's like in talk about fighting shape. Like, you know, he's got uh he's still got it. <laughs> Iron Mike has still got it. Yes. The speed, the power. I'm just I'm just like I'm I'm thirty four. I'm gonna be thirty five in November, so I'm like I can't move like that. If I moved like that, I'm tired for like a month. That's it. Yeah. Five, se- five second video of me throwing like two punches. Then I'm going to sit my ass down. Like, you know what? This isn't for me. <laughs> I got I to gotta rest. I was like, like, don't worry. I can't do it either. But I'm older than you. I'm 40 now, Aaron. So I've got to, if ever there's anything strenuous on set, that's when the stunt double takes over. You know, it's like, yeah, 
This is his go. Put him in the suit. I'm going <laughs> to sit down. Relax. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm kidding. There was, of course, no stunt double on this movie, sadly. You can do, all, you can do your own stunts. That's great. See, he does his own stunts. I do, I do do my own stunts. And you know what? Director Paul Tanter, who directed the, the Nights Before Christmas, never gives me enough credit. Not once does he say, God bless Simon, doing all those stunts himself. He never said that, but he should. I'll, t- I'll tell you that right now. There's a lot of mess- Tomorrow morning, Aaron, we wake up with a lot of angry messages to me. I've slagged off everybody in the f- movie. <laughs> don't worry. This one's not live, so don't worry. I'll let you know. Okay, all right. But if you, if you edit out all the bad things I've said, we won't have an interview. <laughs> <laughs> But this is entertaining. This is what people want to hear. People want to hear the truth. We don't want to hear the fake stuff. Like, okay, well, Simon, here's it. You could say hello. You could say check out this movie and then don't talk for the rest. (laughs) And then don't say anything, Simon. Just say nothing. (laughs) But I think it's awesome, though, man. I think it's a great – you're a great – you're definitely a fun interview. I will definitely say that. Good. (laughs) People out there, you guys need to make sure you get them on your shows, for one. And uh, for for the movies, you know, directors – this is the man you guys need to have out talking about the movie. This is the guy you guys need to have out because he's, he's entertaining. That's what you want. That's right. He's entertaining and he's in loads of trouble tomorrow morning with all the producers. But that doesn't matter. They, people will still remember to go and see the movie, which is the important message. Exactly. That, that's what he's doing. I, I, see, what Simon is doing Lee. is a very intelligent thing because you have people, you watch interviews and they're too shy, they're too quiet, they don't know what to say. They're afraid to say the wrong things. He's not. He just doesn't know what to say and what not to say. So he says it all. That yeah. makes you want to see the movie because it makes him, you're not going to forget him. He's not a forgettable person. You have other yeah. interviews where people don't know what to say. They're afraid to say certain things. And then you forget about it. They might mention the movie once or twice. You forget about it. And then you don't go watch the movie. With him, you're going to watch it because he's a funny guy. And that exactly. trailer was fucking badass. That trailer was so awesome. That's that, it. That was yes. yes. It was it's a hundred percent yes for me. December sixth. Now is it gonna be on streaming platforms or is it gonna be on Blu-ray or Do you know what? I don't know that information. All I know is the date. It, it, December sixth. I'm sure it will be because we have everything's on streaming now, right? Uh it's nobody's buying DVDs anymore, are they? I don't I don't know if people still I, do that. I still I see I'm a type of person I love only getting not every single movie that I watch, but if it's something that I know I'm going to enjoy, I yeah. love the Blu-ray of it. Cause I love to, if I can get it and get it signed, that's one thing I would love to do is get it signed. So Simon, when this comes out on Blu-ray, I'm, I'm going to want my signed copy. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. I don't know if it's coming out on Blu-ray though. That's what I mean. I, I'm hoping that someone's going to make a DVD, uh, but it might, it could be just streaming. Who I, I don't know. Again, I'm the last person to know. Um, I'm gonna mention. I'm gonna say like whoever is in charge of uh, you know putting this out on streaming platforms and making the decision DVD and Blu-ray. Yes, put it out on DVD and Blu-ray. Yes, a lot of horror fans, especially in the indie horror scene, there's a very huge, huge. It's a huge support group, and we love back in these movies when you know when that time comes, and we love just buying these movies. We love getting these movies signed because it, it's awesome. It's cool as hell. We love doing these interviews. So get on that, people now. Get up, yes, whoever you are that's responding, the sales team, again, it's your fault again, sales team. I mean, what are you guys doing there in the office all day? I really don't know. Simon gave you guys credit for this, this cover, so he's going to give I you did. Right. Good job, whoever did that. That's amazing. I love it. Love it. <laughs> it's awesome. It was very good. They're very good, these people, honestly. <laughs> See, they're great. They're great. And this he's he's giving you guys the tough love. He's giving you guys a little bit of love and a little bit of slap. A little bit, yeah. Which is what we all need to grow and learn. Weren't we saying that at the beginning that you've got to keep learning every you know that's how it goes. Yes, exactly. It's kinda of like when your mom tells you not to touch the hot stove and you do it anyway. You burn yourself, you, you learn do it. that again. Simon's telling you guys like, you know, don't screw up on this cover. You didn't screw up. You might have screwed up before, but this beautiful. This is beautiful. And kids, make sure you touch the hot stove. No, wait, wait. That's not it. I told you, Aaron, you told me too much information. Now I'm just thinking about the stove. Don't worry. His mom will probably watch this episode and say, Simon, why are you telling kids to touch the hot stove? You shouldn't. I know. That's that's like a lawsuit on its way to me, isn't it? And they go, Simon told me to touch the hot stove. So I did. And I was like, ah, I'm going to be sued tomorrow morning for this. (laughs) Don't sue me. Sue the producers of The Nights Before Christmas. It's really their fault, to be honest. Hey, he has a point. They know that he, you know, he, 
<laughs> hey, maybe he should have somebody sitting by him and they just kind of pop his hand when he says something wrong. And exactly, he... and they don't. I'm, I'm here all alone. Left. Do you know how dangerous it is to leave people alone to their own devices? We're in lockdown, Aaron. God damn it. I, I could have been doing anything. Yep. Yep, exactly. Exactly. This, this, see, this, this, this back and forth is, this is the first time we've ever talked to people. This isn't rehearsed. This is, this is real. And I love it. This is fun. This is awesome. And yeah. what's that thing, Aaron? You see this thing that's next to you here? Where is it? This man, what's that? This right here, my brother out in California. Now, we never met in person. Anyways, he made this. I don't know when he made this. And I had him on my episode, maybe like it was the audio only at the time. I think it was like my third or fourth episode. And he's, he used to work for Disney. He can draw his ass off. He made this sculpture. He makes a bunch yeah. of, made plenty of sculptures. But one day, um, actually, it was before I started this, but this podcast, which is funny. <clears throat> I mean, as far as like before I officially started it and everything else. And he messaged me one day. He was like, hey, he's like, what's your address? I want to send you something. This is what he sent me. And then at my thing, I was like, can I make this like my logo slash whatever you want to call that mascot, all that stuff for the pot. He said, do whatever you want with it. Hell yeah. And I was like, that's what it is. And sir, I mean, sir, my last name is Sturdivant. So I, you know, that's where the horror of Sir Sturdy comes, but this is like the, the horror of Sir Sturdy figure, so to speak. I, a, a one of one. I love it. And it's freaking awesome. And like, that was like, it. this might be one of my most, out of all my collection, I, I count this like a horror thing. This is definitely one of, if not my favorite thing, as far as in my collection, just because it was like handmade by my brother. And then sent it to me, which I think is just an awesome thing. So, yes. And once we're done recording, I'll turn the green screen thing off so you can kind of see it better. Okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like a, it's green. It's, it's one of those shades of green I was talking about earlier in the episode. Well, it's, it's sort of oddly. It looks ghostly, which is fine. Yeah. You know, it, you know it's for see, now, when I, I have this on my episodes now and, like, all my videos I do, Certain videos I do, depending on the background color, this thing will show up perfect sometimes, and other times it'll just be like kind of a camouflage, like I do what I want. Yeah. Uh, well, that's that's the that's the process. It is. I'll learn. Hold, hold on, hold on one second. Hello, I'm on the phone. Uh, can I get it later? Because <laughs> I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem with working at home. People are like, hey, do you want some food? And I'm like, hey, can, I, can I get back to you in a minute? You know, sort of, uh, I may as well be live on air and they just don't care. <laughs> By people, he means his children. Is there his wife? There's, yeah, yeah. A anybody that's around, it doesn't matter. The minute I go on anywhere, it doesn't yep. matter where. I could be on my own in a church and somebody will <laughs> find a way to interrupt me. I find that funny in life, though. You could be at home minding your own business, just, just hanging out. Or you want a conversation or whatever. Nobody wants to pay you any damn mind. As soon as you start doing something. <laughs> yeah. Are you hungry? The people have loads of loads of stuff to say. Yep. Now, once you're done recording, they don't, they're not going to even talk to you. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. The food, the food is, will, be, will be gone. You know, they'll be like, we're going to save you some pizza, but you didn't seem to want any. And I was like, ah, okay, thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> now... I know you're in, is there like one type of food that's known in Canada, like in Canada that you have to have if you were go to, if you were to go out there to visit Canada? Or... So Canadians are famous for poutine, which is like fries, French fries with gravy and cheese. Ooh. It doesn't sound nice, but it is, it is actually very nice. Um, it's the only thing Canada really has, to be honest. Uh, they don't have a lot. They don't have, they have, it's all American food on that. And I'm not really, I'm not Canadian anyway. I'm British. So it doesn't really, to me, it's, I prefer like, I, I prefer my, uh, you know, curry food, you know, Indian food. Okay. Which is, which is, which is oddly British food. People say curry. Oh, that's Indian. You're like, it is Indian food, but it's uh, Indian British food, if that makes sense. There's, we've got such a big Indian community in, uh, in our, you know, sort of, uh, in our in our neck of the woods, that it's actually the most popular meal in Eng in England is a is curry. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. What about you? Have you got a favorite? Uh, and wait, well, it's American. You guys, you got terrible food. <laughs> it's <a bit> of... <laughs> terrible for you. Um, it's terrible for you've got good Mexican food. That's it. That's all I'm giving you. I'm not giving you anything else. 
I guess it depends. Like for me, I love like um like a soul food, like a fried chicken, collard greens, sweet potatoes. <laughs> For the stuffing food, it, it, I'm a mood eater though. Like as far as well, yeah, yeah. It depends. On whatever I'm in the mood for is just delicious at that time if it's made right, and that's kind of how I am. But uh, as far as New York, I guess pizza. I guess New York is best. For, well, that's more the New York City. I'm not in the city. I guess pizza. I don't know. Yeah. All right. I'll give you pizza, and as well, pizza is New York pizza is very good. Like I've actually I did a movie once in Italy. I was very excited. I love pasta. I love pizza. I love it. Went to Italy. Most depressing experience I've ever had. The pasta is nothing like pasta everywhere else. The pizza is nothing like, you know, like they're, they're like, oh, no, you know, you've, and they know as soon as you bite it, they're like, it's okay. You know, and you're like, no, you know, sort of it tastes weird. And they're like, are you American? I was like, I'm not, but I've probably had a lot of American pizza, I guess. And they're like, yeah, it's different. I was like, if by different you mean better, then yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't even, American, uh, what is it? Apple pie, maybe, I guess, but that's not, that's not. Well, good. America, apple pie is pretty American. Yeah. So I, I guess, I guess we could say apple pie is what I'll throw on the table for America, even though it's like, that's not like my go to. No. But I mean, I, I'm going to agree with you on apple pie. Uh, I do like an apple pie. Has to be made right, though. Has to be made right. Has to be yeah. made with some vanilla ice cream on top. Oh, stop. You're just making me hungry, Aaron. Well, I, You're so making me hungry. I can't have food because I'm bloody talking to you. I've got food in the next room. People are eating it whilst, the, whilst we sit here chatting. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Hurry up. How many questions have you got left? Save me something. Sorry, go on. <laughs> that was funny. I love that. That was a funny little rant right there. All right, do you have a go-to food or snack when you're watching a horror movie? Oh, right. So I can't eat proper food when watching a horror movie because I want to... So, you know, there are these people that have a bowl of whatever or a a burger. I can't do it because I know with a burger, you need to watch it. Even with pizza, I feel like I need to not watch it, but I feel like I need to see what I'm biting if I'm biting a bit of pepperoni or whatever. That's why popcorn is great. Popcorn was always the thing you could just, you, you could still keep looking at wherever you're looking and just keep going like this. So I do like, I, I love, I never eat popcorn anywhere but a cinema, but whenever I go to cinema, I get it even if I don't really want it. So, but the only other thing I do like is ice cream. You know, sort of, I'm a sucker for like Dairy Queen or just any of those sweet things. I really, if it's bad for you, Aaron, I like it. You know, sort of, you name it, just... Anything that's bad for you, Simon loves it. <laughs> loves it. See, and my me, I could do pizza while watching a horror movie because I don't. I can, you know. I mean, I know it gets a little flimsy at the end. That's fine. Bite it, but I, I do get what you're saying. Like having like a proper meal where you gotta really pay attention to what you're doing, like having spaghetti or something. I can't really do that eating horror. I feel for me, I feel like anything I can eat and like watching a sport, I can eat watching horror wings. Pizza, hot dogs, again, junk food mainly, chips and dip, stuff that you're not, stuff that's terrible for you. It's just easier to eat. I never. Yeah, but, Aaron, don't you feel like watching sports is? I feel like watching sports, you can eat a burger, fries, wings, no problem. But a horror movie, it like it requires a different level of concentration. Like you know, you can't look away. You know, with the sports that you know you can look away because the game stops all the time. You know, whatever it is, hockey, basketball, football, you know what I mean? So if the game has got constant breaks in it. So you're like, it's okay to take a drink, take a... But a horror movie, I don't know. Sometimes I, I can't look away. You know you know what it is? If it's something, like, because a lot of things I can kind of eat, like, depending on where my plate's in, I can kind of eat without really watching. As long as it's something I don't have to, like, spin around, like spaghetti or soup. Yeah. Or, like, you have to glance down to cut it. But if I could just grab it with my hand and just throw it down the hatch, which you could do that with pizza... Wings and burgers, maybe a small. What kind of a, Aaron? What kind of a psychopath is watching a horror movie eating soup? Listen, if you know someone that's eating soup watching horror movies, just they, that's a cry for. There's another cry for help, Aaron. Reach out to these people. It's that, not right. You shouldn't that, be eating soup whilst watching a horror movie. You just ask him for trouble. I, I I agree with you there because soup is hot as fuck. And there could be a jump scare, especially if you're someone who has it. Say if you have it on a TV tray 
or you have it in, you know, those, those soup mugs are holding it and you, you jump and spill it on yourself. That's, that's a mess. That's a hot mess. You don't want to deal with. That is. And plus, if, haven't you seen Indiana Jones? What if all of a sudden you're spooning something and there's like an eyeball in the spoon that you're, you know, mm -hmm. these are legitimate concerns, Aaron. Very legitimate concerns. And a lot of people that eat a lot of, not all, but a lot of people eat soup. Once they get to a certain point, they're slurping and it'll make you want to just slap the whole damn bowl at their hand. Like, I'm, I'm trying to watch a fucking horror movie. Shut up. <laughs> No, I've got something worse than that. I, I, so this is a, probably a throwback to my mum as, you know, sort of watching movies. You know, you know some of it, we all know these people. They sort of ask questions. Because you're not in a cinema. If you're in a cinema, everybody knows to shut the fuck up. Yes. But if you're watching a movie at home, right, people, they can be on their phone. They can, you know, or, or they can ask questions. That's the next most annoying thing is they ask, you know, they go, who's that guy? You know, hey, did you see that? And you're like, hey, I'm like, what? And like, who's that guy? And you're like, I, babe, I, I, I don't know. I just saw that guy. I, I'm, I'm with you in the experience. This is the first time we've seen that guy. And the, you know, or if you're in the cinema, they sort of quietly say to you, hey, hey, did you see that? And they're like, no, I just paid fourteen dollars to stare at the floor. Yes, I saw it. It's on the big screen. What? And you're like, babe, please shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let yeah. me watch the movie, and then we can talk about it afterwards. That's called being in a relationship. I know, but I have to. I can't. I can't be in relationships like that. So all of those relationships that I've had that have ended because I'm just like, if you can't be quiet in a movie, please go away. <laughs> My wife's gotten a lot better with that now, but here and there, when we're watching certain movies, she'll ask me or certain shows, and I'll tell them, like, I've never seen this before. This is my me sitting here watching this for the first time with you sitting here. This is my very first time watching this. I have no clue. I don't know who these people are. Exactly. I've never seen this before. And we're, you know, we're getting, as you said, we're getting this experience together. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. So that's the, I, I'm not sure. You didn't read ahead. Yeah. You didn't read this, that. And it's like, no, I don't like to read ahead from, I like to just watch it. And if I like it, I like it. If I don't. I and that's it. You got to give it a chance, but like discover it on your own. You don't need to know the end. It's fine. You know, we don't need to know what's it. It's like, you know, these people that go, oh, I know what's, I know what's going to happen at the end. You're like, ah, yeah, I mean, I know what's going to happen at the end of most movies before I start watching them, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You can just, you know, just enjoy the journey. <laughs> you know, it's the execution. It's like all those women, women complain about, oh, I know what's going to happen. I was like, these, the women, these watch romantic comedies and stuff. I was like, you know what's going to happen. She, that girl's going to end up with that guy, even though she looks like she's going to marry that guy. I was like, you, you already know this. It's already oh, obvious. Listen, romantic comedies, it's exactly what you just said. That girl's going to end up with the guy she didn't think she wanted, but she knew she, but she needed. That's one. And two, right. it's going to be a wedding scene at the end of the movie, and there's going to be dancing at the end of the movie. Wedding scene and dancing, always the same. And the husband and the wife are going to do some silly, stupid-ass dance, and then everybody's going to join in and dance. You know, people are standing on both sides. I don't know what the hell they're dancing. Yeah. They're on both sides of the line, and people are dancing on a thing, and then it just goes into a... Every single romantic comedy ends in song and dance, and I'm tired of it. And I'm tired of it because I've never been to a wedding where that's happened. You know, you see it, and they all line up and everything, and you're like... I've never seen that kind of coordination at a wedding before. I, I, every wedding I've been to, maybe I'm going to the wrong weddings, but every wedding I've been to has been a car crash. It's mess. People, drunk people everywhere. You know, sort of, uh, there's some guy is supposed, you know, some best man is supposed to be doing something, but he's chatting up a bridesmaid. He probably shouldn't be chatting up, you know, sort of. A, and it's, it's a car, and, you know, someone's mom is arguing with their cousin, you know, over something that happened 20 years ago, you know, sort of. Uh, and it, it just, I mean, that's a real wedding. Yeah. That whole end of the movie stuff. That's, no, you know, that never that, happens. Yeah. That, that's a good way to start a horror movie, though. You know, they're dancing all happy, and then you got that, those two people that's coming to kill everybody. There you go. That's romance. That's, that's what we need. That's the movie we need to make. Yeah, back to that whole romantic horror movie we were talking about earlier. Yeah, the producers should be listening to this. You listening to this? These are good, these are good ideas. We're just, we're just giving them out to you for free. This, this should be the movie that we're talking about, and I should be one of the killers. Because I do research for my roles all the time. Definitely. Yeah, the research is in his mind. That's how he does. He just thinks about That's, it. Oh, right. Makes sense to me. Makes it sense. makes sense to me. We start shooting on Monday. Aaron, we'll need you there because we haven't got a script. All right. We just freestyle the whole script. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll be, we'll be fine. We'll be, I know what we're doing. We just keep talking until they turn the red light on the camera off. Yep. 
hey, that's that's easy. That's easy. The movie doesn't have to make sense. Doesn't have doesn't. to be fine. And as you said, you've been to plenty of weddings that dance and stuff never happens. You never see people get killed at weddings either. Boom. We'll just free we'll freestyle it. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I'm a believer. <laughs> Oh, man, Simon, I had such a great time with you in this episode, man. Such a great, fun, fun time. Thank you for having me on. I, we, we definitely have to do this again. We definitely have to do this again. I would like to get you on. Um, I definitely wanted to get you on after I see this movie. But I'd like to try to get you on even before that at some point. We could figure something out. Well, how about this, Aaron? I'm sure I can get you a sneak peek of that movie. I would love that. Sure, I can do that. Um, but then maybe I'll maybe we'll come back on when I've got my season two of my show coming out. How about that? That's awesome too. When is that coming out? Season two. Or I do not know that information. <laughs> I am the last person they tell, with good reason. You know, yeah. because I would have just told you right now if I knew no more. It was. That's probably why they don't tell me. This is good plan. That's good producing right there. That's what they should do then. Instead of telling me what you can and can't say, they're just like, you know what, Simon. This is what you're yeah. gonna. This is when stuff comes out. That way, you just know you can say it all. They, they tell you last. Like, how, you know, you're like, how come they don't tell me? Like, every time we tell you something, you just say it. <laughs> like, Simon, Some, we, that happened to me once. Somebody once told me, and they were like, "Oh, I've just seen you on TV," and I was like, "You did?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Oh, for what?" And, and it was one of my, like, a, a movie I had on TV. So I rung up the producer. I was like, "Hey, man, the movie's on TV." And he goes, "Yeah, we know." And I was like, "Ah," I was like, "You didn't want to." You didn't want to tell old Simon? And he goes, well, you would have told everyone beforehand. And I was like, ah, I would have, yeah. That's uh, good. Again, that's good producing. Good, good idea. You're, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and why you're so great is because they know you're going to say it when they tell. Yeah. So they're just like, look, once we tell Simon, it's going to go out to the world. So let's tell there him. There you go. Boom. Yeah. Let's tell him. The day before all this drops, so he'll say it the day before, and it's fine because we already released it yesterday. <laughs> exactly. That's that's exactly how they need to do it. That's exactly how they need to do it. People need to stop telling me top secret information and assuming that I can hold on to it because I can't. And he 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 tells you this by showing you this by his actions, yeah. which means it's not his fault. It's your fault. It's <laughs> your fault for trusting me with the information. That's I've never. Aaron is, is spot on the money there, mate. Exactly. He's, he's he's like, exactly. Some some candy right now, or just you know, like a Reese's. That's like my favorite chocolate candy. You can't sit here and say, Aaron, I have this big bowl of Reese's pieces. Can you please make sure nobody eats it? I'll make yeah. sure nobody else eats it. You didn't say me. You said nobody. So yeah. Do it. But that, those these are they are unreasonable expectations, aren't they? They'd be like, well, you left me alone with the Reese's pieces. I don't know what you. Like, I don't know, I'm going to go, well, we told you not to touch it. And I was like, well, that, that doesn't apply. That's, yeah, I can't, I can't do that. I didn't, say, I didn't say I could do that. Yeah. You know, like, you, no, 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 no. You should know by my actions. I ate that other bowl of Reese's yesterday. <laughs> That's right. You see, I'll be like, you know I couldn't, you know, sort of, no, no, no. I, I can't, I'm not even apologizing for it. No, it was your fault. Yeah. Exactly. Take responsibility, people. Yeah. Responsibility. Yes, producers, take responsibility. Us poor actors, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, though, is there anything you want to plug, Simon? Is there any, anything you want to plug? Go ahead. Wait, do I want to plug anything? Yeah. Um, no. Age of the Living Dead. I did that one already, oh. which is out on DVD. No. Amazon Prime. It is out on, it's out on Amazon Prime. <laughs> That's right. You know what's confusing me? It is out on DVD, but in, not in America. It's out in DVD in England. Ah. Because they sent it. So, but that's, you're not, none of you people are in England, probably. Some if you are, it's out on DVD. If you are out on, in England, it's out on DVD right now. There you go. There is. Somebody's, somebody. I don't know if I was supposed to show that as well. Hold on. Was I supposed to show that? Anyway, I've shown it now. So if people know I have it. <laughs> I got sent a copy of the DVD. I hope all the cast got one. Because if not, they sent me one. Yeah. Uh, I'm annoyed. I'm going to annoy loads of people now. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to do what you're good at, man. If you're good at annoying people, which I know. At, that that will be my thing, Aaron, is that if you want to annoy someone, just send me in. And I won't even do it deliberately. I'll just do it organically, accidentally. It'll have... That's, 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 see, that's, that's, that's a talent right there. Though. That's a hidden talent. It's a gift. You should that's, be proud of that. I, I will tell my mother that finally we found out what my gift is. Good. 
Good. All the mysteries in life are solved. Yeah. See, I mean, you maybe, maybe not, but you may be annoying her with the horror movies you do because she doesn't like them. Boom. Yeah. Gift. There you go. Keep it up. <laughs> we have it all figured out, people. We have it all figured out. But I do want to seriously thank you for coming on, Simon. I had a great, great fun time. Lots of laughs. Good. Me too, mate. Me too. And I hope I, I hope you'll have me back on again then. Oh, def- definitely. I hope you'll come back on again because I definitely want you on again. I definitely want you well, on. I, I'll be on, Aaron, as long as they let me on. They, they might be, this might be my last interview. No. I see. They don't control the horror with Sir Sturdy. Sir Sturdy. Right. So you're on anytime. Anytime you want to come okay. back on and shoot the shit, review a horror yeah. movie, let's do it. Okay. Good man. All right, Aaron. Take care, mate. Have a good one. Enjoy your food. I hope <laughs> I will. Save me some. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Cheers, mate. That was awesome. Nice. Am I still on with you? Yeah, I'm just hitting. <laughs>